Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking about today a tool which uh, I wrote and I've been maintaining for the past uh, year and a half or so. So we're going to be going over the why, why I wrote it, why I think uh, we needed another one of these things, another man in the middle framework. Uh, how we're going to be going over how the, I structured the tool, uh, how it works. And then the rest of the talk is going to be hope, live demos, so you can all hilariously laugh when they will fail. Uh, just uh, a quick. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Don't no, have anything to see it. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. That's probably the best place where, if you're interested in contacting me, I'm in. That's probably the best place. Uh, that's my GitHub profile. That's my blog. And I've been pretty active on GitHub the past couple of years or so. I've been contributing to a number of open source projects. So the first thing that uh, when I tell people that I developed a man-in-the-middle framework, this is pretty much their expression. Like, why? Why would we need another one of these things? Uh, man-in-the-middle framework seems to be popping up uh, almost every year, if not every month. The reason is um, the ones that are not MITMF uh, are just used to automate various command line tools and just to parse credentials out of log files and stuff that, quite frankly, is not innovative in any way, shape, or form. So these are the four major, um, I guess, man-in-the-middle tools that have popped up over the couple of uh, five to six years. So we have Edercap. It's, I have a love and hate relationship with that tool. Uh, it is very, still very good uh, with, when it comes to actually protocol attacks. So to actually gain man-in-the-middle position on a network, Edercap is still very good. Uh, the problem is that um, it uh, just doesn't work when it comes to actually modifying the traffic that you intercept. I have never gotten uh, error filters to work. If you have that, I'd be interested in hearing how. Uh, plus, it's written in C, so it's not easy, very easily extendable unless you're a hardcore C developer. Uh, then we have Mallory Proxy, which came out, I think, five years ago, if I'm not mistaken, at Black Hat. Uh, this was a very good effort. Uh, it was uh, principally made to just intercept traffic. It wasn't an attack platform. MITMF is an all-out offensive man-in-the-middle attack platform. Uh, so it wasn't exactly what I wanted. Plus, it is now a dead project. Uh, it hasn't been updated in forever. And uh, it's basically abandonware at this point. The Middler is also a good effort. It was developed by Guardians. Um, the reason why I did not like it that much is that it uses Python mixins and Python constructs that I really find to be not that uh, efficient and reliable when it comes to these kind of attacks. Um, also, it hasn't, it's a dead project. hasn't been updated in forever. Um, it's abandonware, too. Uh, the last logo is the subterfuge framework which uh, was actually a very, also a very good effort. Uh, I forget the uh, handle, the nicks of the authors. But um, so this, the only thing that I got working out of this was the ARP spoofing engine, which was actually coded really, really well. Um, all of the, everything else was just completely broken. I never, it had a web UI that I never got working. And it has, it's also basically abandoned where now it hasn't been updated in forever. Um, so. The reason why I wrote MITMF was just because I needed something to inject iframes in HTTP traffic, plain and simple. Uh, and none of the existing tool set uh, out there did this, for, uh, did this for me. So um, I decided to just sit down and Google until I was blue in the face until I found something because I, was ju I just couldn't uh, believe that there wasn't something that just injected iframes in HTTP traffic. It's a simple thing. So I uh, Googled until I found this thing. So Sergio Proxy, the first thing that I thought of, who the hell is Sergio, and why is he naming a proxy after himself? Um, but what really, really fell in, what made me fell in, fall in love with the tool was its description. So it was created to deal with some of the significant shortcomings that air cap filters have been, that have when modifying HTTP traffic, which was exactly what I was looking for. So what is Sergio Proxy? So it was created by Ben Schmidt, which I actually have never had the pleasure of meeting. Um, that's his Twitter handle and blog. Definitely buy him a drink if you see him. 
what this is, it's basically a modified version of Moxie Merlin Spike SSL strip proxy tool. Uh, it's, and he just modified it in such a way where it hooks functions in the proxy to then, that then uh, get, the traffic then gets uh, par, uh, pushed down to these plugins that the framework implements. And then the plugins can modify the HTTP traffic in various ways, and then it sends it back uh, on the wire. And for those wondering, it does, it's not actually a person, Sergio, it's an acronym. Uh, super Effective Recorder of Gathered Inputs and Outputs. Wow, that's, yeah. Um, so I found what I wanted, but uh, problem solved? No. Uh, so the code quality was usable. It was extremely alpha. Um, the only thing that I that was able to work was the inject plugin, which uh, is still in MITMF to this day, um, on heavily modified, but it's still in there. So the inject plugin allowed me to inject uh, HTML iframes, and it was extremely reliable and extremely efficient, unlike the other tools. But uh, it also came with other plugins, which had very, really cool, really, really cool functionality when it comes to offensive attacks and. Uh, these plugins, unfortunately, relied on uh, calling tools from the command line, which I personally, that's one of my pet peeves, I just really don't like doing that. Um, and they were, some were just completely broken, they were outdated. So I decided that Surge Proxy was a really good code base to just start building um, something new upon, and I did just that. And this is, I had a, always had a, uh, a wish list for uh, a man-in-the-middle offensive tool. And this is um, a little part of it, but uh, I didn't want to rely on external tools. By external tools, I mean calling stuff from the command line. I want a lot of verbosity in logging. I don't like when tools don't tell me what they're doing. Um, I wanted to minimize dependencies as much as possible, which I completely failed at. Um, unfortunately, MITMF has a lot of dependencies and can cause problems on certain systems, but the installation instructions kind of work around that. And I wanted to integrate Beef and Metasploit with their respective API and RPC, so we can use these tools uh, to additionally to have a, uh, just own the network even more. And also learn from other projects' mistakes. I didn't want to create something and then just push it up to GitHub and then abandon it like everything else. I wanted something that was easily extendable, that, uh, that I could update as atta new attacks came out, if new attacks came out, and um, so then other people could use. So this is, MITMF after a while um, became sort of a Frankenstein tool. Um, I started looking at other tools and they had a lot of really great functionality and so I've started integrating all of these tools into MITMF and it's basically a combination of uh, all of these tools that you see here. So we have Surge Proxy, which was the, is the original code base. I then integrated SSL Strip Plus, which I'll talk about later on. Uh, App Cache Poison SSL Strip uh, mod, which is basically a fork of the SSL Strip proxy that enables App Cache Poison uh, attacks, which I'll talk about later. I did uh, borrow some code from the Subterfuge framework, uh, basically only the ARP spoofing code. Uh, Netcreds, which we'll talk about in a second. Responder, which you should probably all know. Uh, DNS Chef, which is a really, really cool uh, DNS server. And it's basically the Swiss Army knife when it comes to DNS. And also, I borrowed a lot of uh, JavaScript from Metasploit. Metasploit has uh, an extremely good um, library when it comes to um, uh, JavaScript library when it comes to actually client detection, like finger browser and OS fingerprinting. But um, what I really wanted to drive home with this talk and what I really wanted to just show everyone is what you can actually do using a modern tool when you're the man in the middle, when you're in that privileged network position. Unfortunately, a lot of people tend to underestimate this attack vector, I find, especially, uh, I guess, blue teamers, you can call them. Um, they seem to think that it's not a big deal and that's partially not their fault. It's because pen testers up until now really did not have an efficient tool to that they can use to take, to uh, just use to take full advantage of this privileged network position. And uh, this is what I really want to show everyone and hope hopefully show you. Um, and what I really want to drive home with this talk. 
So this is a fairly high level overview of how this tool works. Hopefully it's intuitive enough so everyone can understand. Uh, so going from left to right, which, and of course it cuts some of it out, you know, resolution problems, hope everyone can see that. So um, the first thing that happens when uh, the traffic hits MITMF is that it goes through net creds. Now net creds is, oops, sorry. Net creds is written by Dan McKerney. I can't believe I forgot to pronounce his last name again. Sorry, Dan. Um, definitely buy him a drink if you see him. He's an awesome dude. That's the link to his GitHub. Uh, that's the link to the GitHub pro, um, project page. So what this is, is basically a credential sniffer on steroids. Uh, it doesn't, it has two major features which none other tools have. So it doesn't rely on ports for service identification. So that means if someone is connecting to, for example, an FTP server on an standard port, uh, NetCreds will be able to grab those credentials. NetCreds is also TCP reassembly aware, which is a huge deal. So uh, what this does is it, if uh, credentials are fragmented between multiple TCP sequences, NetCreds will actually reassemble the original TCP packet and parse credentials out of it, which is like Wireshark does, which is not nothing groundbreaking, but none like any other tool that does this does not support that, including EdgarCap, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely check that out. And of course, I've integrated that into uh, MITMF. So al already off the bat, uh, we have credentials pouring in. These are my elite GIM skills. I felt very proud of that, and I wanted to show you. So after that, depending on which mode you started MITMF in, and uh, this is actually a fairly recent addition, I'm going to be showing off mostly normal mode because that's where the meat of the framework lies. Um, depending how you start MITMF in, um, it can do one or two things. So in this case, we're going to go with, we, for example, we started MITMF in normal mode. Uh, the first thing that happens is if the traffic is destined to us, we will be able to reply to, the, to different protocols using built-in servers that MITMF starts up. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can see that right off the bat, DNA, MITMF starts up DNS in a DNS, SMB, and HTTP server. If the traffic is not destined to us, um, specifically HTTP, if H HTTP traffic is not destined to us, what happens is uh, SSL, it gets, goes through the SSL strip proxy which then communicates with uh, different plugins um, which you start up on the command line. These plugins can modify the traffic in various ways. These plugins can also uh, interact with um, the servers uh, that uh, my TMF starts up. They expose an API. So for example, you can customize like DNS queries. You can get spoofed DNS. You can uh, set paths, URLs in the HTTP server. And uh, plugins also have, can incorporate poisoners. So for example, uh, there's a spoof plugin that handles your ARP spoofing, your DHCP spoofing, your ICMP spoofing. And then of course, there's a complete port of Responder. Uh, so on top of the DNS, SMB, and HTTP server, you can use Responder to start up an, uh, all the additional servers that Responder uses. So that's MSQL. And of course, it's poisoners. So MBTNS, LMNR, and all of that great stuff. Framework also exposes its own API, which I won't be showing you because it's kind of alpha and it might break stuff even more. Um, it's primarily used to uh, start and stop plugins on the fly without uh, restarting MITMF. Uh, so that's normal mode, which I'll be showing you. APF mode is a fairly recent addition. APF stands for active packet filtering. So this tries to replace header cap, uh, uh, sorry, header filters. Um, it completely replaced header filters, their functionality. Uh, this is because, for example, if you're man in the middle in a proprietary protocol, uh, kind of tackling the traffic at the application level is not going to really help you that much. So we need to um, take the traffic and modify it at layer three. So that's what APF mode does. Uh, it intercepts all the packets, and depending on a filter that you supply, uh, you can uh, modify that traffic, and then uh, the traffic will be forwarded back to the uh, destination. And in APF mode, you also you can only start the Poisoner plugins. This is because uh, currently there are some I have some IP table conflicts which I have to resolve. I'm just probably not doing something right. I have to go over that. And then uh, behind the scenes, there's the configuration file. 
So the configuration file I'm going to show you actually is divided in sections. Can you see that? I doubt it. OK, there you go. OK, so uh, the configuration file is divided in sections. Uh, each section, uh, either um, you can tweak MITMF with or every plugin. So for example, this is the DNS server, which you can specify uh, each domain to respond to a certain IP address. Uh, it does support basically every kind of DNS query you can possibly come up with. Um, and these are all the other plugins which you can tweak, and I'll be showing you that in a minute. So what's great about the configuration file is that it updates on the fly. So you don't have to shut down MITMF to, if you want to tweak like an attack or uh, some kind of setting in the configuration file, you can just tweak it while it's running and the changes will be passed down through the framework. So now, if we go back to the presentation. So uh, currently, MITMF is at version 0.9.8. And from here on, I'm going to be doing all live demos. So demo gods be with me. Uh, currently, there are around 19 plugins uh, that you can use that I've built. And some have actually been contributed by uh, other people, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to be starting out. Well, well, actually, I won't be starting out with the spoof plugin. So unfortunately, I've had some technical difficulties here. I wanted to, uh, basically, I can't bridge uh, the VM's adapters. I've tried to set up like a Raspberry Pi and stuff here to have my own network. But unfortunately, that hasn't really worked out. So um, what the spoof plugin sh uh, does is it poisons stuff. So you can. Uh, do your ARP spoofing, your ICMP spoofing, your DHCP spoofing, and your DNS spoofing. Um, when you DHCP spoof, you can actually uh, exploit the Shellshock bug, which is actually a really cool feature, which um, you can use to like, get a quick shells on outdated Linux systems. And you can target subnets. Uh, you, can target, you can target a specific subnet. You can specify CIDR range. And you can also um, target the entire subnet, which is not really recommended with our spoofing because you break stuff. And um, you can also poison, uh, you can ARP poison via ARP requests and ARP replies, which is not some, something that not a lot of other tools do. And uh, pretty much this is what you want to use to actually get in the middle. Unfortunately, I can't show you this. I tried, but uh, technical difficulties. Now, of course, um, you can. Be, Besides from actually intercepting traffic at the network layer, uh, you can just connect directly to the uh, MIT, to MITMF just using the system proxy. And that's what I did. And I'm going to be showing off the inject plugin. Now, this, um, this pretty much injects anything you ever wanted into HTML. Um, and it simplifies uh, your life a lot. So you can inject URLs. So if you have, example, a JavaScript file on a server that you want to inject, you can actually specify JavaScript payload from the command line. And you can specify either a file, a local file that you want to inject. So let me just show you here. So the most basic usage of the tool, it needs root, it needs to have root privileges, is the only argument that's required is the interface. So if you just uh, run this command by specifying, with specifying only the interface, you can see it starts up. And it gives you kind of an indication of what it just did. So it started up NetCred, Surge of Proxy, SSL strip. And the, uh, it started up the API a handler and the HTTP server, the DNS server, and the SMB server. Now, in this, in this way, uh, let me go back to my VM. It's just plain old uh, SSL strip. So you can see here that the output has been heavily modified for verbosity because I wanted a lot of, well, there's the post request. I wanted a lot of information of what exactly was actually going through this tool. So you can see here, it gives you the time and date. Uh, it gives you the IP address of the client. You can see that. 
uh, it gives you the parses the user agent, which is not something reliable, but it kind of gives you an indication of uh, what operating system is behind the traffic. And it gives you the host name that it tries to resolve. So this is just plain old fashioned as a cell strip, nothing interesting, right? So what happens if we call the inject plugin and I specify the JS payload argument and we're just specifying a little JavaScript payload on the command line. It starts up, you can see here that uh, the inject plugin's online and refresh the page. The internet is slow. And there you go. So try doing this in EdderCap, I dare you. Um, this already is beyond anything that's out there uh, in terms of functionality and usefulness, I think. Um, so that's just, a, just like the, the beginning of things that we can do. So, for example, and of course, uh, it actually tells you in which host name uh, and which uh, page it injected in, into. Now, this is interesting because it doesn't actually use regexes to, um, to parse the HTML and inject the payload before the body. It actually parses HTML using beautiful soup, which is a Python library. So it actually parses the entire HTML and it can tell exactly where the end of the, the HTML body is and it will append the append uh, the payload to the page. So once we can do this, we can do a whole lot of other stuff, like your limit is only your imagination. So one of uh, the things that I've always wanted out of a man in the middle tool was something that can uh, easily fingerprint uh, OS browsers and uh, all of their, enumerate all of the browser plugins, enumerate any, all the possible information you can get out of a browser. So that's why I created the browser profile plugin, which does exactly that. So you can see here that we started the browser profile plugin. I'm gonna refresh the page. And we keep getting boxes here. And Ah, okay, there we go. So you can see here that um, it basically injected a JavaScript, uh, a little JavaScript, which was borrowed from Metasploit partially. Uh, and you can see here that it um, got back the browser's uh, profile, basically. So it told us, okay, it's a, a times 86 architecture. Flash is not installed. The IP is that. Uh, it doesn't have Java installed. The language is uh, in English US. It's Windows 7. It even tells you if the user agent is lying, which is kind of cool. Uh, and, it, and then it parses, uh, and then it actually uses some quirks, which are different for every browser, to uh, actually fingerprint the browser. This, I did not do this. Uh, the guys at Metasploit, the awesome guys at Metasploit did this. I just borrowed the code. Now, of course, um, it wouldn't, this wouldn't be that useful if you couldn't use multiple plugins together, right? So, for example, if I wanted to do what I just showed you on top of injecting something else, for example, um, So here we're on top of uh, we're on top of grabbing the browser profile. Profile. We are actually gonna pop an alert box. So we're using two plugins together. And of course, you can chain basically all of the plugins in MITMF together all at once, which is something that's probably not recommended because it's gonna be noisy. But you could just use everything. So here we popped an alert box, and we should be getting the profile back, there we go. So already you can see that the kind of, the functionality that this provides is something that it doesn't really exist currently in any other tool. So, let me go back here.
So um, who, I, I don't know who is familiar with Leonardo NVE. Uh, he, a couple of years ago, um, released a proof of concept to partially bypass HSTS. Uh, it basically exploits um, DNS server changes to bypass certificate pinning in the browsers. And this isn't some black magic. It's actually kind of really simple. So I'm just going to move this here. OK, so the first thing that happens is the browser requests, you know, normally google.com over HTTP. Um, what SSL Strip Plus does, it returns a redirect to www, so four w's, google.com. It then mirrors uh, the, the four w google.com to the original google.com. So we basically load the original web page. We then rewrite all of the links uh, in the HTML page to the alternate domain, and the client will continue in uh, plain text since the browser really has no HSTS setting for uh, that spoofed domain. Now, I'm going to be showing you that real quick. I'm going to be using Chrome. Okay. And of course, you can chain all of these together. So, for example, if we wanted to do this on top of the HSTS plugin. So you can see here, uh, it started the SSL strip plus, uh, and we are also injecting. So the initial request has to go over HTTP, of course. Otherwise, this does not work. So here we go. So as you notice on top of here, you can see that there are four Ws, and we are going over clear text. So we completely bypassed certificate pinning in the browser. Uh, and of course, we can, if we go to Gmail, come out the load. And you can see here also that on top of that, we are actively getting uh, the profile from the browser. So it enumerated all the plugins. It tells you if Flash is installed. So here it says it in Flash 18 is installed. Uh, Java isn't installed and the full plugin list and the browser. So you can see here it's still in plain text. I'm going to just type in a random account just to show you that we actually get the credentials. Okay. And if we go down here, we will see that we got the credentials. So email 44con, password is 44con uh, for exclamation points. So we've already gone far beyond uh, all of the classic man in the middle attacks. Uh, so we were able to bypass, partially bypass HSTS. Your mileage may vary using this. This really depends on what uh, website you are targeting, uh, what browser they're using, and the, the network configuration. I found that it seems to be pretty, uh, it does work uh, most of the times, but this, your mileage may vary significantly depending on which network you're on. So, and of course, in, Already with the fails. Okay, I'm gonna reload this real quick. <laughs> Great. I love Flash. This is the first and last time I'm using Prezi, by the way. Okay, so while that loads, I'm going to be talking about the other plugins that I've implemented. So uh, you can just 
to dash dash help to see all the, the list, the full list of all the plugins, we have a lot of options. You can really do a lot of stuff with this. Um, so I'm, the next thing I'm gonna be showing you is the SMB auth plugin. So since we can inject iframes, why, can't, why don't we just uh, inject UNC paths into the HTML page to invoke USB, uh, SMB challenge responses? And uh, since we actually spin up an SMB server um, when MITMF starts up, we can actually capture those without starting any additional tools. Oh, sorry, wrong interface. Okay, that was fast. Okay, so already you see that uh, we injected UNC paths and we have uh, the hashes of the credentials on the box. And of course, you can use this plugin on top of other plugins to really, uh, really uh, just completely own any client uh, that you want. So, let me just go back here. Okay, so I also included an SMB trap plugin, which you can use to uh, exploit the SMB trap vulnerability. This, of course, uh, it's the nature of the vulnerability will uh, block all traffic, but uh, it's still kind of useful. For example, if uh, Skype is vulnerable to the SMB trap vulnerability, you can use this to actually grab credentials if someone is using Skype. But just for giggles, I'm gonna use IE. And you can see here that we already have the hashes of the box. So what this does, it just basically does a 302 redirect to a uh, file uh, slash slash uh, URL, and that will um, give you the hashes. So we can do all of that. And uh, so why not just replace stuff out of HTML? This was actually the first um, plugin that was contributed to the framework. It was written by uh, this guy. I won't even try to pronounce the name. Uh, that's his Twitter handle. And it just replaces strings in HTML content. So I'm just gonna show you off real quick. And I'm going to load So, I don't know if you noticed, but down here doesn't exactly say Google search and I'm feeling lucky. And of course, since uh, we can update the configuration on the fly, we, we can just edit this, for example, say, I don't know, And if we refresh the page now, you can see that it's now being replaced with 44 con. And it, it actually tells you in the output of the tool. So um, this is a really, really cool attack. So I'm not gonna try and pronounce the name again. Uh, Christoph Kodowitz. That's his uh, Twitter account. So this basically um, poisons web pages and it makes uh, using HTML5 app cache and it will uh, make the pages persist in the browser's cache forever. 
So the only way you can actually delete these cache pages is to manually clear them yourself. And this is actually a very, very stealthy persistence technique if combined with something like a beef hook, for example. So I'm going to be showing you that now. So you can see here that we loaded the app cache poisoning plugin. And I'm going to be refreshing the page. And you can see here that this is a default template. Of course, you can edit this template um, with whatever you want. So this is just to show you that it actually works. So I'm going to really just close everything here. I'm going to stop MITMF. And if we go back to Google.com, you can see that the page is still poisoned. And this will stay like this forever until you actually manually delete the browser cache. Then, uh, I've also integrated, so this is a complete port of Responder. So everything you did with Responder, you can do with MITMF. So it can uh, spoof MBN TNS queries, W redirect queries. Uh, it can use, it has uh, passive fingerprinting, which is really cool. And you can actually man in the middle with WPAD. So I'm just going to show you off that. And and um, I'm also an idiot because I did not plug the recharger cable in for my laptop. So you can see here that the output, it started uh, all of Responder server, the LDAP server, the IMAP server. And if we actually query a non-existent share, for example, if it works, <coughs> let's try that again. OK, well, that's the first fail of the day. OK, well, that's not working. Um, but oh, as Responder does, uh, you should be able to grab all of the hashes uh, from that SMB, uh, from that erroneous SMB uh, share. So um, also, uh, we implement um, a, uh, this is called FerretNG. So if you're familiar with Ferret, it does sidejacking attacks. And uh, what this does is kind of streamlines that uh, workflow. So for example, uh, what this does is it, it starts up an additional proxy, which you connect to. And all of the captured sessions, all the captured cookies from the clients um, from the clients that MITMF intercepts will be feeded into the proxy that you connect to, and you can just transparently hijack sessions um, this way. So you're basically browsing as all the clients um, that MITMF intercepts. Okay, so I'm just gonna feel sorry, but I forgot to do this before. So I'm just going to show you that real quick. OK, so now I'm going to be browsing to slash dot. I like picking on slash dot a lot.
you can see here that we already captured a cookie. I was previously signed on to Slashdot, so this is actually the authentication cookie. Uh, once the page loads, I'll try to do that now, actually. So what I'm going to do with this is uh, my machine. I'm just going to use uh, the ferret ng proxy, which is started by default on port 10,010. And I'm going to be browsing to slash dot, which is what the client did. So you can see here I'm signed in as buzzword happy. And if we wait a little bit. Yep, well, the internet is really slow. Okay. Okay, well, that's way too slow for my patients. So I'm just going to go ahead with this. And you're going to have to believe me, and you can try it out. This is all available on GitHub, so you can just download it and try it out for yourself. OK, so after that, I already showed you the browser profile plugin. This uses, uh, again, it uses the uh, uh, OSJS library, JavaScript library from Metasploit. And it also uses the plugin detect JavaScript library from Pinlady, which can enumerate um, exactly the Java version and Flash version installed. Uh, then we also have a JavaScript keylogger, which is also really cool. Uh, this was also borrowed from uh, Metasploit. And it's been slightly modified to support Unicode, uh, which was added in by a contributor. I think, it's, if I remember correctly, his name was Hamid9. Um, and it also has been modified to work on mobile devices, because uh, the one in Metasploit did not work on mobile devices. So I'm just going to start that up. And if we browse, for example, to Google, and use Internet Explorer, because um, Yeah, well, uh, again, demo gods, right? Okay, let me try another. Slash dot. Ah, here we go. Okay. Well, that took a while. Okay, so you can see from the output it injected the JavaScript, which just acts as a keylogger. And if we go back to the Windows machine and we type in something. Should see in the output. Might have not loaded the JavaScript yet. So I'm just going to give it. The internet is really slow. <laughs> the 
this. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so um, fortunately, internet is not working, which is kind of a big deal for me, but I will move on. Um, this I put in there basically just to have fun with my neighbors. Uh, this just flips images 180 degrees. Uh, again, I'll try to show you, but uh, apparently life in general is not cooperating with me right now. Internet is not working. Demos. I think I'm going to do videos from now on. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the plugins. And uh, if you want, later you can come up to me and I can show you in person because apparently the internet here does not work that well. Okay, so these, the plugins that I've showed you so far aren't really that offensive. Like, they're, they're fun, uh, they're cute, uh, they can. Uh, be very useful in certain situations, but what happens if you just want to gain a shell on a box? Um, we want shells, and we got we want, we like shells. So the first plugin, thank you. The first plugin, which uh, I again I'll try to show you. I don't think we'll like. So what this does is it leverages the browser profile pr plugin that I showed you earlier. And um, it then connects to Metasploit, which I'll start up real quick. Oops, sorry. I'll start in another terminal because the resolution's off. Can you see that? Yes. OK. So I'm starting the message RPC server, which comes in Metasploit. Okay, so you can see here we started the message RPC server. I am going to start the browser sniper plugin. Now, what this does is you can see here that it connected to Metasploit. It will accurately, uh, it will use the browser profile plugin to accurately, accurately fingerprint the browser and the OS. It will then um, feed that information to the plugin and it will identify. Uh, if any of the plugins uh, on the browser are vulnerable, if they're outdated. Oh, well, that worked. Okay, so you can see here that uh, it identified it's got version 18 of Flash. These are all the plugins list. And it, of course, did not find uh, a compatible exploit because demos. Um, but what I want to show you, I guess, at this point, is the configuration file. So in the configuration file, this is the uh, part which 
um, you can configure the browser sniper plugin with. Um, you can see here that you can uh, define the port where the Metasploit will start up all the, the exploits. And you can just add exploits in as they get added to Metasploit. So for example, here we're targeting the, uh, Java, the uh, Java Rhino vulnerability, which is a very old version of Java. And you can define if it's a plugin vulnerability, if it's in a, a, what OS it, uh, the vulnerability uh, targets, the browser, and the, um, what plugin the exploit targets. And then you just give it a, a, deep, a complete list of all the versions that the plugin is, that the exploit affects. Um, this is the, you can actually pull uh, these versions from cvedetails.com. Uh, and I actually include in the uh, GitHub repo a tool that kind of scrapes the page, that you just give it a URL and it'll scrape the HTML and it will print out uh, the uh, affected versions and you can just paste them in here once a new exploit comes out. And uh, the last thing, and I'm hoping that this works at least so I can show you something cool. So the FilePon plugin. Now the FilePon plugin is just awesome. So Midnight, I don't know if how many are familiar with Midnight Runner. Um, he, he's awesome for letting me do this. Um, this basically uses the backdoor factory to uh, transparently backdoor executables going over HTTP. Uh, it then uh, it uses code from uh, the beaten backdoor factory and the BDF proxy, which is basically his version of this. Uh, the, the little difference from uh, his version and MIT Maps is that you don't uh, have to uh, set up the handlers in Metasploit. It actually does that all for you. So I'm going to start up the plugin. Okay, and you can see here that in Metasploit, it's currently setting up all of the handlers. So you can see here, it did it. And I am going to go to live. That's systemtunnels.com because we all we love backdooring admin tools. And I'm going to download. Uh, let's see, autoruns.exe. Okay. Ah, so here we go. Ah, it worked. So you can see that um, the binary has been, was downloaded. It then fired up Backdoor Factory. It backdoored the binary. And uh, if we start this up now, we should get a show. Actually, we shouldn't because I didn't update the IP. So what's great about this is that, again, the configuration file updates on the fly, so we don't have to do anything. So let me just kill the jobs. OK. And if we download auto runs again, You should get a shell, which um, which uh, we are not seeing because, again, demos. Yeah, this is the last time I'm going to be doing live demos, I think. This is not meant for me. Um, so that's the main goal of this plugin. Again, you can try it out for yourself. Life uh, doesn't like me today, uh, but you, I promise you will have much more success if you don't do live demos. And then um, the HTA uh, drive-by plugin. Now this uh, basically uh, performs drive-by attacks by injecting the pages with an HTML5 application. And if the application runs on the target, you will get a PowerShell session. I, at this point, I'm not going to even show you this because it'll probably fail. But uh, you can try it out for yourself. Also, uh, this is actually something that I uh, pushed uh, I just pushed the GitHub. So you can basically use this beef auto run plugin. So beef um, up 
recently updated, uh, got an update where uh, it uses now ARE rules, which are which is an acronym for Audubon rules, and um, these will trigger on certain OS and browsers that you define. So it's basically uh, what the beef, beef injection framework did by Spider Labs, if you're familiar with it, only that it's now incorporated. Oh, it's not from Spider Labs? Oh, okay. I thought it was from Spider Labs. Uh, that you incorp that um, so it's now incorporated into Beef. And what this plugin does is it will um, auto load the rules for you, and it will assist in OS and browser detection if Beef does not uh, it does fails to fingerprint the uh, target. So in conclusion, again, you can, it's all up on GitHub, so you can just Google MIT Math. It's the first thing that comes up, and you can try it out for yourself. Um, these are a list of features which I hopefully will be including over the years to come. So I want, the main thing I want to do right now is to port everything over to MIT mProxy, which is a really, really awesome uh, toolkit. This will give us uh, SSL TLS support, interception support, and um, HTTP, HTTP2 support out of the box. I also want to implement an SMB proxy. Uh, so instead of actually just responding to SMB queries, we can actually proxy SM, uh, SMB. So for example, we can rewrite executables going over SMB, which is kind of fun. Uh, we also, I also want to make everything less hacky, because right now the API is not exactly straightforward. To improve, uh, just to improve things so other people can contribute. I also want to improve the modularity, modularity um, rather. Um, I also want to add Evil Grade and Snarf integration, which are two great tools, um, especially Evil Grade because that's really cool and it just hijack up, uh, hijacks updates. Uh, SSL split like functionality, I would like to add. I don't know if that I'll be able to do that because that with the uh, framework, it's not that straightforward. Uh, I do actually have a proof of concept for man in the middle link RDP connections, which uh, is currently a fork of the project uh, on GitHub. It's almost done. I just have to work out uh, some kinks here and there. I want to also add more protocol level attacks, like Yersinia, for example, um, which uh, kind of deals with spanning tree protocol for, and uh, Cisco uh, with Cisco uh, native protocols, and also more HSTS bypasses. Uh, if you're familiar, there was a uh, HSTS bypass uh, released a couple of years ago uh, with a tool called DeLorean, which basically exploited NTP, um, it's exploited NTP to bypass uh, HSTS. Also, it's worth mentioning, if you're more of a Ruby person, um, EvilSocket uh, released a really awesome project called BetterCap, really cool name, um, which you can find there. It's written in Ruby, so if you're more of a Ruby person, definitely try that out. Um, I wouldn't wish you, I really don't want anyone using EdderCap anymore. So uh, please try this out if you don't like what you see in MITMF, for example. Questions? <laughs>